my wedding cake tree, my absolute favourite tree in the garden. And on first glance, it might look perfection, but look a little bit closer and there are a couple of problems that urgently need sorted out. And that's where these come in. So come on, garden with me. Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back. And welcome back to the front garden and to my favourite tree, Cornus Controversa Variegata, or the wedding cake tree. What a name for what a tree. It is my all-time favourite. It was here when we bought the house and it was one of the things that I took as a sign saying, you've got to buy here. And it is just beautiful. I always go on about how beautiful it is. It has these lovely horizontal layers of growth, which are quite different to a standard shrub or a tree. They have the most beautiful variegated foliage that is a mid-green and a white. But when you look back from a distance, you can see that actually that variegation gives the whole tree this really unusual, quite bright white shade. The branches when you get in really close, are dark grey, but as they come towards the little twigs towards the end, they're bright red, which look really gorgeous once all the leaves fall in the autumn and you're left with the skeleton of the tree. But, and there is not just one but, but three buts. Although this is looking really nice from a distance, there are three problems that I want to solve. The first one is here. See this green growth? That's reverted growth. We need to get rid of that. Secondly, and I don't know how easy it is to see when you're in this shot, looking from where you are, but we have got some dead growth. And actually, we've got quite a lot of dead growth. <laughs> actually, that bit just came off in my hand. This is last year's damage. And then finally, when you look at it from this angle, it looks perfect, upright, and exactly the way it should be. But behind it, we have three really large silver birches that are forcing it to bend and lean over a bit like the Tower of Pisa towards me. I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, are you ready to see quite how much this thing leans? <laughs> to see what I mean? It is really on an angle. Okay, so let's tackle what is the biggest problem first which are these dead branches. And this is where my loppers come in. A very nice pair of loppers, by the way, very kindly supplied to me by Nowaki. And I have been keeping these so good, I have not used them at all because I've been saving them for this job. It's a special tree. These are a special pair of secateurs. No, they're not secateurs, they're loppers. And I want to use them to get the cleanest, sharpest of cuts. But let me tell you exactly why this tree has dead growth. Because normally, if you are growing a wedding cake tree like this, you deliberately don't prune it. It doesn't need pruning. It doesn't grow vastly quickly. And what you want are as many of these lovely horizontal layers as possible. Just as summer in Ireland has been really wet this year and really disappointing, last year, was the absolute opposite. It was very hot and very dry for quite an extended period of time. And this is one of the casualties. I have to confess that I didn't expect that this tree was going to struggle in any way in terms of water uptake. It's really quite mature and our ground, even during dry weather, stays pretty moist. So I really was quite surprised when I started towards the end of last summer, around late August. I was really surprised when I noticed dieback and I wasn't sure what the reason for the dieback was and I really believed that it was drought. What I did though was I didn't leap in with the loppers and start to attack. Instead I've left these branches for an entire year. I wanted to see A were they going to recover and B I wanted to leave them long enough that they actually got dry and brittle like this so that I would know they are definitely dead. So they're going to need to come out. And like I said, normally you wouldn't prune a Cornus Controversa, but 
but we're going to need to just to get rid of this ugly dead growth. Because this growth is quite fine, I'm going to be able to take it out with a sharp pair of loppers. But even still, the big thing that you want to make sure is that whenever you're removing any branch off a tree, that you don't damage where it joins really close in to the trunk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I'm going to cut this bit off. Every bit that you cut off before you take it off really close to the trunk is going to reduce the weight, that bending force, that's going to reduce the risk of it bending as you cut it, it tearing and it leaving a really nasty scar close to the trunk. Another bit gone. I know this seems kind of sad, but this is really going to improve the tree and improve the look of the tree getting rid of all of these really nasty dead bits. Excellent. Now, that's the first bit removed, but sadly, it's not just that little bit. This one down here as well. There's also this branch up here. And unfortunately, two more that are much, much bigger. This branch here that runs all the way out. And this lower branch as well that runs all the way out to the front of the tree. It is such a shame that these have died off because as you can see, these aren't like the little twiggy ones higher up. These are proper like four or five foot long branches. That's why I wanted to wait to see if they were going to come back. They are not going to come back. Every bit of them is as dead as anything, as dead as a doornail, dead as a doorpost, whatever the phrase is. So there's only one thing for it. They are going to have to come out as well. And that's where I'm going to show you the second technique for getting rid of a slightly larger branch off a tree. And that's not using a pair of loppers. It's going to be using a little pruning saw. And for this, you only need a small one because the branch is quite small. You're using this because really, when it comes to a pair of loppers, you don't want to be chopping through anything that's bigger than at most an inch in diameter. Though realistically, I would be saying a little bit narrower than that. So instead, we're going to use a pruning saw. Be really careful if you're using these. These are as sharp as anything. And actually, a little aside, when I was back in horticulture college, we used these for pruning fruit trees. And I gave myself one of the worst cuts ever across the knuckle of one of my fingers. Take that as a warning. Warnings aside, here is exactly how you do it. Again, what you want to do is you want to reduce the weight of the branch for when you're cutting it really closely to the trunk. So I'm going to come, I don't know, a few inches out, basically just somewhere convenient, and I'm going to start cutting. And what that means is as I cut, I can get rid of the vast majority of the branch and the weight. Even if it tears or breaks badly, it's not a problem because we're still protecting this area here. Because let's face it, this is a goner. Ugh. Right, once you've got it down to a nice short stump, then it's time to clean it off. So what you want to do is you want to make a nice clean cut that's going to be close to the trunk of the tree, not so close that you're leaving a really wide wound, but also not so far out that you're leaving a stump. It's quite easy to see. If you look carefully, what you're going to see is what would really be termed a knuckle. So you've got the branch itself running into the trunk and it starts to splay out and you'll see lots of rings around it. What you want to do is cut quite near the top of that so that you're going to have the smallest surface area possible once it's cut, but at the same time, you're also not cutting too far out and leaving that stump. So it's quite easy with something like this, I would happily just cut straight down and through. But on the other hand, if you're cutting something much bigger, and particularly if you're cutting something that is green as opposed to this dry wood, what I would do is I would make a few small cuts underneath and then cut from the top. And that's going to give you a lovely clean cut all the way down. Right, that's off. And as you can see, a nice 
clean cut that isn't going to harm the trunk of the tree. Okay, so that is the dead wood removed. And unfortunately, there was quite a lot of dead wood to remove. But despite the fact that these bits are really quite large, because of where they were, I don't think it's damaged the overall form of the tree. One of these pieces was tucked in really low underneath the main canopy, and another piece jutted out towards one side and towards the back. So I think it still has that lovely form, particularly when viewed from this direction, which is the way we generally do view it because of where it sits in the front garden. I think I've managed to rescue it. The big thing though is I've realised that if I have a really long, extended, hot, dry spell, I'm going to have to think about the water levels for this tree, particularly because it is tucked underneath three much bigger monster trees that are always going to outcompete it for water. I think it's something that you need to bear in mind for your own trees and shrubs that you have in the garden. But just remember as well, trees are very thirsty when they are drinking water. So it is a little bit of a game between how much water you conserve and how much water you use to keep things like this alive. Certainly, I think it's worth thinking about for the future as we do look more and more towards water conservation. But now that we sorted one problem, it's on to the next. And that problem is here, this green growth, which is known as reverted growth. Hello from inside the wedding cake tree. And if you don't know what reverted growth is, here is my super quick explainer, because it is really very simple. A lot of specimen trees and shrubs, things like this wedding cake tree, that are variegated, are often grafted, or they have been genetically, well, I suppose, bred to bring in this beautiful variegation. But technically, variegation is a bit of a weakness in a plant, because all of that white material in the leaf, it's not photosynthesizing. That standard green growth is stronger and it always wants to push through and that's what will happen. You'll occasionally find a branch or two just like this that is growing back as plain green and that is reverted growth and in fact you can see it all over my garden not just here. Do you see these really big variegated maples? If you look carefully you'll see reverted growth up there. Yes I know it's another job I need to do and you can see it really clearly here in this beautiful variegated flocks with pale pink flowers but you can see quite how much standard green reverted growth has come back. I'm going to need to get around to doing this as well. So if you see this plain green reverted growth in your own plants it's pretty much generally accepted that the best thing to do is to remove it and you'll be pleased to hear that just as simple as it is to explain what it is it's also just as simple to deal with it. All you have to do is cut it out. So again Look at how much there is and decide whether you can clip it out with a pair of secateurs or whether you need a sharp pair of loppers. When I'm looking at this bit here, it's actually not that thick and I think I can quite easily get rid of it with my secateurs. Again, just like with the dead growth, you're cutting nice and close towards the main branch, but not too tight against it. And at the same time, not leaving a stump. There's that green growth no more and it's going to improve the overall look of the tree because you're not going to have that jarring blob here and there of pale well not pale actually mid green growth that you really don't want and while we're sorting the reversion particularly if you've got a wedding cake tree or another grafted tree you might find that on closer inspection you find these these whippy bits of growth and if you look at them they look like a regular dogwood, which is a cornice, and that is exactly what this base growth is trying to do. This is coming out from below the graft union, and this is the growth of the original cornice stock that the wedding cake tree has been grafted onto. A bit like reversion, this is going to be stronger in its growth habit than the rest of the canopy, and you can see how quickly these grow, so you want to stay on top of these as well. And again, just like the reverted growth, what you want to do is just cut them out. By getting rid of all of this and staying on top of that, all of the energy, all of the growth is going to go through into the main tree and not get diverted into this stuff, which, let's face it, doesn't look nice, but it's also detracting from the main tree. So go in, find where it joins, in amongst these brambles, and cut them out. 
really nice and close. It's going to give your tree a much more neat look, and it's something you particularly want to stay on top of all of the time. Two jobs done, one to go. I've got the dead growth removed out of the tree. I've got the green, plain, reverted growth removed out of the tree, and it is looking so much better. But now I need to start tackling the third job, and I'm going to start it in this episode. But realistically, this is going to be a job that's going to take me a while because we're talking not about the cornice, but actually about the silver birches behind. They are massive. I would say they are upwards of 30 to 40 feet high and they have the most beautiful arching habit. I love them. But they still do have quite a lot of low down branches. And what that's doing is as they arch down, and you can see quite how much they really do arch down, they're kind of smothering this tree. Their growth is so much stronger than this will be. This thing, it's a gentle creature. And instead, it's bending forward because of all of that growth. So what I'm going to start is doing some easy cuts. For now, my plan is to remove just a little bit of growth, just to give this a little bit more space, a little bit more breathing room. And interestingly, if you've got silver birches, now is really the time to prune them or to really cut back branches. The reason for that is that everybody knows that really you prune things when they're in their dormancy. And for a lot of trees, that's winter. But actually, silver birches are most dormant in late summer and going into autumn. So now's the time to get the work done. Ultimately, I'm not just going to take a little bit off. I'm going to take a lot off. I'm going to do what I just mentioned is a crown lift. That's lifting the lower branches, which you can see at the moment, give the birches this kind of shape. Instead, I'm going to lift some of those branches so that it lifts the canopy up. I think it's going to be really nice. I think it's going to be really nice because it's going to expose all of these beautiful white main trunks at the same time as lifting this whole area, making it more open and light and removing the competition that is really forcing this wedding cake tree to push forward. But it's going to be a job. It's not going to be a job for these. It's going to be a job for a chainsaw. A nice, easy afternoon of work. Bit of snipping, bit of lopping, and bit of pruning with the pruning saw. And I love jobs like this, where you can see an almost immediate positive impact in how something's looking, especially when it's something special. You want it to look well all the time. And I don't know about you, but I think this does look so much better. All of that growth that was plain green is gone. The dead material is gone. And particularly on this side, you can see that there's just that extra bit of room, that extra bit of air that's going to allow this to thrive. So hopefully you've enjoyed gardening with me. Hopefully it's given you some tips and some information and you've learnt something that you can use in your own garden. And as ever, until next time, see you later.